Hey everyone, welcome to today's video, and we're back. If you were wondering where we were, we spent time in Chicago at Slaughterhouse, as well as in Columbus at Scooter Cube. With lots of wrenching and building, we finally got to enjoy our bikes on the road, and we had some fun. Now that the rallies are over, it's time to go back into the garage and actually start working on a rally. The bike, I mean. Here it is. It is a Vespa Rally 200 from 1974. It has issues with the engine as there is a clanking sound coming from it, as well as the suspension and brakes being rather crappy, so front end's coming out. First thing we need to do is drop the engine and all we need is just a couple of tools. And we start off by taking the carburetor airbox cover off, taking the air filter off, and then unhooking both the choke and the throttle cable. Then pull off the fuel line as well as the air filter bell. Next up is the ignition. We're just going to unhook the CDI and then open the junction box and unscrew all the cables. Do not forget to take a picture. I actually have to come back to this video because I forgot to take a picture to remember how they were connected. I forgot to point the camera at my shifter box when I was uh, untightening those cables, but I afterwards untightened the clutch cable, got spooked by a doggy, pulled the cable out of its guide with the outer cable, and then also untightened the brake cable, where I did the same thing, just, just pulled it out so it was loose and the engine could come out freely. After um, taking the rear wheel off, we can then focus on the exhaust, which comes off with a 17 socket. It makes it easier to pull out the bolt when the wheel's out. And then we can untighten the exhaust on the manifold, and with a little wiggling and force, it comes right off. The last thing that's holding the engine in is a swing on bolt, as well as a bolt on the back of the shock. It makes it easier to have two sets of hands where one hand pulls out the long bolts on the swing arm and on the shock and then you can just take your engine and pull it out. With the engine mounted in my engine stand I can focus on the carburetor which is just simple two bolts like on the 150 and 125 engines. After you have these out you can pull out the carburetor you take your gaskets off and you unveil this carburetor box screw. You just unscrew and you can pull off your carburetor box. In order to check if we need to repair the rotary, I took the chance to check with a feeler gauge the thickness of our rotary and everything seemed fine. Then we got the cables ready to take the ignition off. Um, very simple, you've seen me do this before. You mount your flywheel holder you unscrew your flywheel and you don't need a special tool because the nut on the rally is held with the circlip so it pulls it off by itself. We then unscrew the stator and pull out these cables which is a pain in the ass. The shifter box up next which is pretty straightforward just two nuts and you can pull the shifter box off. I've almost forgot to pull off the breaker cam off the crankshaft, but luckily it came off easily. The next up we do the rear hub. In this order, unscrew the rear hub, remove the brakes, and then unscrew the back plate and take that off as well. It's pretty straightforward. Clutch side, we take our clutch cover off. We take our little pressure plate off and we secure our clutch with a special holding tool so we can unsecure our castle nut and unscrew it with a special tool and then simply hinge it out from the crankshaft.
This is followed by taking the oil drive out as well as the gear that it is that is driving the oil drive. We can then focus on the cylinder, unscrew your head, pull your cylinder off. And then although we're splitting the engine, put something underneath your piston. Um, you'll see for me it was quite important um, because after I removed the circlips and pulled my piston out, I had some stuff falling down. You'll, you'll be able to hear it in a second. There it is. It was the needle bearing of the piston pin that completely disintegrated. Luckily we had nothing on the piston but it was the whole the whole thing just came apart and I think this is where the rattling sound came from because the piston pin was uh, completely eaten up. After removing the cylinder studs it was time to split the engine. One of the studs in the case was kind of screwed up so I had to extract it but after that was done I could just uh, pull the cases apart. When taking the gearbox apart, I like to keep everything neat and tight and in the right orientation and order so it makes assembly at the end um, a lot easier. I will skip a couple of parts where I took the cruciform and the axle off because that's pretty straightforward. What's interesting on the rally engine is these bearing holders. Um, they were just screwed in and, and secured. Uh, I actually have never encountered this so that was fun to take out. If I would just wash the case, I would stop here, but um, we're going to get, go a step further. So I took the brake lever out and the kickstarter out and then started to preparing it for the sandblaster. This has been the first time I use a sandblaster on Vespa cases and I also gave me a chance to try my new sandblaster. And it was fun and stuff came out pretty clean. On advice of a professional, I used very fine glass beads and it really cleaned up the aluminum nice and well. Because this is a complete engine overhaul, we also wanted to replace the engine bushings, so I had to pull the old ones out. Um, as easy as it seemed in this video, we're not going to talk about where I hit myself in the face with a crowbar and got stitches. See, very easy. No stitches. Not at all. While sandblasting I wanted to protect the bearing seat so I cut the bearings in and then I took the old ones out. They were completely destroyed. Um, but the clutch side and the rear axle ones were pretty straightforward. You just uh, heat up the cases, put something on and bang them out. The bearing on the selector rod side was a little bit more of a pickle because I didn't have the right tool, but I was very carefully using a punch so without scratching the seat I could bang it out, but getting the right tool is on my list. Now the outer ring from the bearing on the flywheel side, that was a completely different story. You couldn't really grip it and I was struggling hard to get it out, so I need to find a solution. One eternity later. I finally found a welder in the neighborhood that could weld me in a piece of metal and it took like five seconds to bang it out afterwards. Pulling the bearing off of the crankshaft was the last thing to do to put it back to zero and this is where we're gonna end our video today. In the next one you'll see me rebuild the rally engine from scratch, getting new bushings, rebuilding clutch as well as rebuilding the primary. So until then I hope you enjoyed this, have fun, subscribe, comment and see you then.